Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino inviting you to a hardware adventure concerning a Pocket 386 modern made retro laptop. Now, this is exactly the Pocket 386 delivered to me by Chemex Tool, a shop on Amazon that was interested in weak points in the machine, things that can be improved and so on and so forth. And indeed, what most likely seems to have turned out to be a weak point is the graphics card. Today's main dramatis persona, the graphics card, has been kindly supplied by Chemex Tool, just like the entire laptop. Chemex Tool is a shop on Amazon.com where you can find a lot of those awesome Chinese gadgets that we have come accustomed to seeing as of late, such as the Pocket 386 featuring 8 megabytes of RAM, a 386 compatible processor, and other such late 80s, 90, early 90s sweetnesses about it. And which before that was also distributing the book 8088, version 1 and 2 and which is also having a lot of the peripherals and other things that you might be interested in when, well, having such a machine. And they were so kind to ask me previously to make a review and a test drive of the machine which would be sent to me and, you know, kick a bit its tires, see what works better, what works worse. And while it was very pleasing to try out and looked beautifully. Unfortunately, it seems that I have had the misfortune for of its graphics card dying. Well, not in flames, but it seems to have been some sort of thermal death. Anyway, they were so cool to send me now a replacement graphics card. And with it, I intend to continue the adventure. So Chemex Tool, thank you very much. And in order to continue my tests, Chemex Tool was so kind to forward to me this reserve or spare part. When you look at it, it is again a Cirrus Logic card. What is immediately springing to the eye is the connector. This is a substantially smaller connector than the graphics card connector of the book 8088. So no, you cannot use the one's graphic card in the other by any means. All right, so now let's get to it. I got here just some tweezers for two funny little operations. The one is removing the on off button, simply pull out in a straight line. It's a little button, right? In the past, these buttons were delivered separately and you had to assemble them yourself. Here it is pre-attached and you have to unattach it. Now here, remember to also pull out the compact flash card because otherwise it will not be able to get out of this slot here. Then turning the machine upside down. It had here two covers, which I have meanwhile removed, as in my further tests, I shall not make use of them and shall be driving my tank unbuttoned in the hope of thereby perchance somehow limiting the thermal damage experienced last time. And now there seem to be nine screws here or how many are these? No, they're not nine. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight screws there are. And you know, luckily just to note, the legs don't have screws. So you do not need to chip off the leg in order to reach a screw as it is with many other laptops. I am rather happy about that. Sometimes these things are a bit lodged in the plastic and it is a little more circumstantial, but 
Anyway, if they lose enough, I shall be happy. Yeah, you know what? Okay, I'm not getting the screws out of their respective pipes where they are inside, but it doesn't matter. And you see, we can already start opening the machine, but there are certain ribbon cables and so on and so forth that we must be careful with. We want to see the lower side of this part of the motherboard, as this is where the, the graphics card will be on. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of the battery, just so that we are sure that it will not create any difficulties here. Just let me take this out. Okay, battery is out. And now I should be able to, but being very careful not to open it too far in order to not damage this cable, I should be able to somehow access the lower part of this. Just let me see. Is this connected to anything else? It does not seem to be, but <laughs> the ports on the other side are, of course, uh, are fixed. So while this is already apart, I will have to pull it back my direction, I believe. Pulling here towards like off from this little part. Finally, so this is the ground, the base of the, the, the ground floor of this whole thing okay and here we are having the clean motherboard with the chips and and inside it looks like that i'm just going to hold it a bit closer let me put this as close as reason reasonably practicable okay and then that's the best part uh, the back part <laughs> The back part is, of course, the best part. <laughs> yeah, close up enough for you to see. And this here is held by four screws, the graphics card that we are interested in changing. And here would have been the compact flash card, which would have been getting in the way. And lifting it from this corner up just gently enough and then from here we are getting it out so that is the old card the one which burned so to say and there is the new card and i don't know whether this is meaning anything to you it does not mean anything to me but let's see whether there will be any different experience with this card now when turning on the machine. So, attaching it to the base correctly, I am depressing it. And then indeed the holes for the screws are aligning. All right, we now have the graphics card. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Now I only need to, well, stick it all back together, right? Okay, then. Yeah, where was what? There must be a slot for a compact flash card and that is the card slot. So that must evidently be exactly that way. And the trick will be again getting things to face into their respective slots. Right? Like that. <laughs> that looks like that. Ah! Not even who knows what challenge. Okay, here maybe a little bit. Anyway, that's how you can take it apart 
and how you can put it also back together again. Only part is that these cables stay away from the screw channels, okay? Then let's screw it back. And the machine is nearly completed now. Just the battery needs to come into place. Somehow the battery cover is the one I find a little bit difficult. Okay, now it worked. When, when completely sliding it in, it worked. Then the card, right? Head down as we remember. Okay, and then as final descent, the button, which also happened to turn on the machine right now. And ladies and gentlemen, we are having an operational computer apparently once again. Here we see it starting MS-DOS and everything. So, for all of you who guessed maybe it's the graphics card, yes, you were apparently right. It was the graphics card. And with the new graphics card, things are once again working and will permit a more in-detail software review. As to the hardware setup, I will really continue in the future with leaving these parts open, hoping to at least somewhat get cooler air to the graphics card, because frankly speaking, these slits here, I am just not sure whether they will be sufficient given that there is no active air conducting element. And with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and should you need to change any hardware in your pocket 386 you see the machine is actually very friendly with regard to repairability it's easy to take apart it's actually quite easy to find relevant components and it's not a task to shirk from to chemex tool go my goes my sincere gratitude for having provided me with a replacement graphics card and all I can by now say is onwards with the further adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having joined today. See you soon again. If not a subscriber yet, please consider it. Until we meet again, have a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.